All right, this time on Rad Rad Video, we're tackling another weird physics question. How tall is the biggest loop you could possibly do on a skateboard? Buckle in, because this one's a little bit weird. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, a channel where you can learn new things about skateboarding, including physics problems and learning tricks, and I answer all of your questions on my series Ask Rad Rat as well. Uh, today we're talking about a question from a guy who goes by Thrombotic Event, which sounds pretty sexy. Um, the question is, what's the tallest full pipe loop that you could possibly do? And I was thinking about this in a bunch of different ways, and here's the set of rules I came up with. This loop is a Sonic the Hedgehog style loop where it's a perfect circle and there's a, a, a roll-in leading up to it. So in real life, a skateboarding loop isn't perfectly circular. Like it gets a little tighter at the top, uh, which makes sense because as you lose speed, you need the transition to get tighter so you still stick to it. But I don't know how to do that math. That's really complicated. So just to be honest, I'm just doing a full circle because it's simpler, still very, very complicated, but it's simpler and it's doable. Uh, the other thing to think about is the pumping power of your body. I'm not calculating for that, which doesn't really matter. As a ramp gets bigger and bigger and bigger, um, a pumping motion doesn't do as much because you know your body, you know your feet to your center of gravity is like three feet. So you, if you're skating a six foot ramp, that's a big deal. Eight foot ramp, big deal. Twelve foot, sure, but like a twenty five foot ramp, you know whatever, it doesn't make as much of a difference. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. If you see someone skate a real full pipe, it's a big deal. It's like eight feet tall, right? You pump, you're getting like part way up the sides and you kind of do a cartwheel and you loop all the way around. You're not doing it from full speed. You know, you're not like rolling into it. You're starting in the full pipe. So it's a little bit different, but, um, this is actually calculatable. So I'm going to do that. The biggest pipe I saw when I was doing some research for this was a guy on a BMX bike doing a 16 foot. Uh, full pipe, which is pretty crazy, but this is going to be a lot crazier. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the methods that I could have used that I've tried and different dead ends and everything. The first one is uh, using potential energy as a way to calculate it. Here's a guy on top of a four foot ledge. No matter what he does, he's going to have the same amount of, of energy as he lands. So either he'll drop straight off and all that energy will be going vertical, he'll absorb it in his knees or there'll be a smooth transition, all that energy will be going into a horizontal speed, or it'll be a bank and it'll be a little bit of both. And so, because of the way that works, you can do some really simple stuff without even doing any math. Like let's say there's a 12 foot drop in and an eight foot quarter pipe. How much air could you get? You could get four feet of air because you'll be the same amount of potential at the top of the ramp and the top of your air. Now, in reality, there's pumping, there's wind resistance, there's all that type of stuff, but just for the basis of pure math, like if you were to drop a bowling ball down, how much air time would it get? That's a really simple way to figure it out. But the problem is with a full pipe is that once you reach past uh, past the 90 degree mark, you're actually pushing against the top of it, right? It's transitioning you back from vertical to horizontal again. So you're pushing against the ceiling. You're not going to get as much air because you're hitting the ramp basically, right? So. You know, my first thought was 12 foot ramp would get you 12 feet at the top of the, the loop. Like that makes sense if you're just sort of looking at it. But no, because you got to stick to the, the ground so or ceiling. I don't know at what point the ground becomes a ceiling, but you know what I'm saying. So how do we figure that out? What kind of calculation could I come up with? Do I have to figure out the centrifugal force versus your speed coming into it? Uh, it's got it's going to be some weird calculus because you're like, you know, the angle I didn't need to do it, thankfully. I did some searching on Google and I found this calculation. This is from the Boston University website, do a bunch of calculations and stuff, and then they boil it down to this simple formula at the end, which I was very thankful for. Uh, it all seems to check out from what I understand of how they, they figured it all out. But basically, the height of the roll-in is equal to five radius over two um, of the pipe. So what does that mean? Let's say you have a 12 foot drop in, or a 10 foot drop in, let's say, um, plug that into the formula, you get an R of four, um, which would mean that the pipe is, you know, four on both sides, eight feet tall. And that just kind of makes sense if you think about it. 10 foot ramp, eight foot loop, seems doable, right? Um, again, this isn't calculating for wind resistance and that type of stuff, but, you know, drop a bowling ball on a 12 foot ramp, it will be able to just barely make it through the eight foot loop. So, cool. Now that we know how to calculate it, 
what type of roll and ramp should we be using? <laughs> and this was a difficult thing. Could I figure out like, cause you could do a, a roll in from space, you know, and figure out the absolute maximum speed that you could go. And then the, the full pipe would just have to be a gentle curve so that you don't break your legs when you're on it. But I wanted to keep it semi in the basis of realistic physics and do a ramp that already exists. So I picked Bob Burnquist's ramp. Bob's ramp is 75 feet tall, the first part of the roll-in. So if you were to drop in with that, replace the first jump of the, the mega ramp with a loop, how big could that loop be? Well, let's plug it in and figure out. We put 75 feet in this formula, we run the numbers back, and we get a full pipe of 60 feet. <laughs> Which, I mean, just picture that. Imagine dangling from your ankles from the top of a six-story building staring at the ground and people are this big. That's what it would be like when you're upside down. You see your camera guy like running by and you can barely even see, see him because he's so small. That would be ridiculous. Um, I, that's terrifying, <laughs> but in theory, it seems like it would make sense, right? Um, the only problem though, of course, is the wind resistance, which I hate. It's so complicated. There's no simple calculators that figure it out. You can, uh, you gotta figure out like the forward facing surface area of the body versus the density of the air and you run all this stuff and it'll give you a number that works for one speed so you know not while you're dropping in and accelerating but just the speed at any certain point it sucks it's complicated and i hate it but i did a lot of math on that and i figured out if you were to drop in on, on bob's ramp with no air you should be going about 47 miles per hour at the bottom but when i ran my wind resistance attempt <laughs> I got about 39 miles per hour, which is what you would actually be going in real life. And 39 is not enough to make it to the top of that loop. Um, so that didn't make a, a ton of sense. I, I couldn't figure out the best way to calculate that, but it turns out that it doesn't really matter. If you look up the top speed that you're going on a ramp like that, what you'll find all over the place, like on the X Games website or any articles about the, the big air jumps and all that type of stuff, they'll say you reach about 55 miles per hour. And uh, that makes sense because the way that it's designed, you drop in and then you do the first jump, you land and go even lower. So you're actually at your maximum speed right before the giant quarter pipe, not before the first ramp, the first like jump, right? And if you're going 55 miles per hour at the bottom, if you swap out the quarter pipe for a full loop, you could easily do a 60 foot loop at the bottom of the, the mega ramp. Um, so that actually checked out and that I think works. You have more than enough speed if you do it at the bottom instead of the top. So yeah, like you could do a 60 foot loop in real life, counting air resistance, counting bearing friction, counting all that stuff. It is possible to do a 60 foot tall loop. Um, I don't know <laughs> if anyone would ever try it. Obviously, you could probably die if you did that. Like, imagine if you just slid slightly, you know, like you sort of power slid up a little bit and it slowed you down just enough where you start to lose connection at the top. You just flop all the way to the ground. No one's gonna try it. But in theory, I'm pretty sure it checks out. Um, so that's our first answer, but let's go weird with it. Let's just make it stupidly ridiculous and let's see what the maximum possible is. So the way I decided to do this was to take the fastest speed ever recorded on a skateboard and just shoot that guy at a loop and see how high he goes. So the fastest speed I was able to find the world record speed on a skateboard is 91 miles per hour. Um, so the, the way I, I'm going to do this is going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to shoot the guy going 91 miles an hour up a roll in to see how tall that would be and then shoot him back at the pipe from there. And then I will show you what that would look like which is going to be stupid. Like, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to show it to you because it's, I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. So 91 miles per hour is like 146 kilometers per hour, I think, or actually 147. I'm going to use metric for all the calculations. I always do because I'm not a savage. It's so much simpler in, in metric. Anyway, um, if he's going 147 kilometers per hour, how tall of a ramp would he need? Again, remember the shape of the ramp doesn't matter. So I'm just going to like launch him straight up in the air and see when he slows down. Um, and I did that number and it worked out to be 282 feet tall um, is how high this drop in ramp would be, which is gigantic. So what I like to do when I get a number that big is to figure out the 
a similar sized building and I found this one. This is two feet off. This is the Pier 6 building in Brooklyn. Um, not this little guy over here, but the big beefer right there. That's 280 feet tall. So that would be the size of your roll-in just to get speed for this enormous loop. How big is that loop gonna be? Well, thankfully we've got that formula from earlier. We plug that in and what we get is a number of 226 feet tall, which is the exact height of the New Zealand house in London, uh, which looks like this. So imagine you're dropping in on this ramp. You would have to have some special type of trucks for this because yes, that speed was possible, but imagine like hitting transition going that fast, you know, like suddenly having force coming up at you, you would speed wobble like crazy. So we got to imagine like super rich, you know, tech billionaire decided to invent trucks that have like sensors and processing so that it can tell like how to correct for your speed wobbles or whatever. Like we just gotta, gotta go on the pure physics and imagine that your skater is perfect and that he's not going to make any mistakes. His ankles are steel, like whatever. But, um, if that speed is possible, then having trucks that are super stable, maybe that's possible too. Maybe the skateboard's on a track, so you don't even have to worry about it. I don't know, whatever, but you're going to drop in on this 280 foot building and you're going to do a loop the size of this building in London. Um, and what would that look like in real time? Well, let me show you. So yeah, pretty ridiculous, completely unbelievable, and kind of arbitrary in the way that I picked how that would be done. But I do believe it is possible, maybe not for a human because of the reasons I've talked about and the technology involved in it and building something that big and, and all that kind of stuff. But the math of it does seem possible, which always impresses me because if you go and play Skate 3, it feels ridiculous. Like you drop in on this giant, like in the spillway i think they call it in the game and you can fly way over stuff like it's unrealistic that someone would actually do it but the physics of that stuff does actually check out for the most part so yeah a enormous 220 plus foot quarter pipe or a full loop is possible no one will ever do it obviously but that's the answer i came up with so that's it for now. If you have any more weird physics questions, go to the website redretvideo.com and just submit it as a, as a question through that form on there. I'll, I'll get it no matter what. I like to do the physics one that ones as their own videos, but I'll get your comments and requests from there no matter what they're about. So do that. And in the meantime, until I make your next video, you can subscribe by tapping my logo right here on the center of the screen. And there's some more suggestions that YouTube thinks you might like over there. Thank you for watching.